In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at a plugin for Grasshopper 3D called Meerkat. Meerkat's uh, a plugin that will allow you to use uh, GIS information, specifically shape files, uh, to generate uh, topography and site plans. Uh, to do that, let's first jump over to Meerkat. Uh, when you download Meerkat, you'll see that inside um, all of these plugins will need to be moved to your Grasshopper Components folder. And as they're DLLs, when you first unpack them, they may be blocked. Uh, by right-clicking them, going to Properties, there'll be a button where you can unblock these DLLs. And you have to do that for all of those and also the meerkat.gha. Switching back over to Rhino, if I type Grasshopper, uh, there's an option to go Grasshopper Folders. And then I want to go to my Components. With components open, I can copy and paste those DLL files as well as the Meerkat GHA file. Uh, and then in Rhino, when I load Grasshopper by typing Grasshopper, it'll be one of the new components under Extras. So here, if I go to Extras, you'll see I have Meerkat. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. The first thing I want to do is to import a shape file. Now, the shape files I have are for Philadelphia, and if I use this, we just it's a Boolean toggle, so I'm going to use a button. This will turn this component on and off, and I'll click turn it on. You'll see here I'm currently looking at Seattle, but if I add a shape file, um, and let's just go to shape files, we're going to do contours, open that one up. Um, and I'll click my contour file, you'll see here this is Philadelphia. And this is the region of all of the information contained within the shapefile. I'm going to add an additional shapefile uh, for buildings and another shapefile for curve edges. There we go. Uh, now shapefiles are something that you know you may need to purchase or can find available online for some cities. Some people make them public, some do not. Uh, so what I want to do now is to crop the area of which I'll be working with Meerkat. Uh, and for me, let's see if I zoom in here, I've got Center City, Philadelphia. Uh, I'm going to be just looking at a portion of the site over here. For the example, I'm going to do something small. And by clicking this little draw rectangle, I can come in and just say, um, I'm only interested in looking at this piece of land. And I'm going to say crop the shapefiles. Uh, it's going to ask me where to save them. I'm going to save them to shapefiles. Say OK. Um, and it usually takes a second for that to actually process through. Uh, it's not responding right now. Hopefully in a second it will come back and we'll know that we have new shapefiles to work with. All right, a few seconds later it's, it's done. So I can go ahead and close the parser. This is great. Um, and then I need a new component, which is the Meerkat parse file. And here you can see when I load a file in, I get a lot of data out. So to do that, I'm going to say I need a file path. I can right click and set one path. I can only do one file at a time. Um, and all the way on my desktop is where I saved some shape files. And we're going to start with contours. Say open. The contours go into the parser. And out of this, we get a lot of data. So let's look at geometry per shape. Uh, this currently is 19,598 or uh, 593 vertices. The problem with that is that those vertices could be somewhere off in space. If I go to perspective view, I, I don't see them, um, but I know that we have them somewhere. So what I want to do is use the bounds in point space, uh, and I can take the area of that, and taking the area of the bounds, I can get the center point, um, and I can create my own point at the origin, x, y, and z, so I'm going to construct a point here, and as you can see, this is the origin point. Uh, right now, x is 0, y is 0, z is 0. So using these two things, I want to make a vector two point, and say move from the center point to the origin. And that's created a vector um, that will reposition all of the geometry if I use a move component. So move this geometry at that vector. And here you go at the origin. Now you can see we have some topography. You can see actually one of the roads right there. Now this is just contour information. And the one thing you'll notice is that this is actually flat. So the x and y position of these points is correct. Um, but the elevation hasn't been derived into a z distance. To do that, I'm going to use uh, first 
the field names by making a panel I can read what the field names are. This is kind of index data. And here I can see that number six is elevation. So if I want to say um, field value per shape, I want to get a list item. And that's just saying uh, each of these field values have all 10 of, well, it's actually 11 different values in them. I want to extract just the elevation. So this one here, I'll say, give me the sixth component, the sixth on the list. And out of this comes uh, 860 elevations. So the next thing I'm going to do is just move Z. Uh, up on the Z is where we're moving, and the data we're moving is here, uh, our points. So here you can see now I have the flat points and the elevated points. With that done, I'm going to take all of this and unpreview it. And I have uh, a series of points. To make that into a surface, uh, I have to do a thing called patch. I'm going to create a patch surface, um, this one here. And uh, let's actually let me just look at what the other one is. We have two different. This one's for Rhino 5, which is great. This one requires curves, uh, and then we define U's and V's. Uh, I do not have curves. I'm only using points. So let's use the first type of patch. Um, this patch here. And our curves to patch, no, we don't have those. Our points to patch, we do. These ones here. And this will take a second. Um, so what I've done is patch the points that you can see it's not working correctly. And that's because it's, it's trying to keep these patch surfaces uh, organized through the data structure. To d have it avoid that and use all of them, I'm going to right click and say flatten these points. And now you can see I have a, a surface that bends along that. If I wanted to increase the complexity of the surface, I could increase the number of spans here. Right now I only have 20, which means that it's roughly fit to the points. It doesn't uh, adhere perfectly. Increasing that number to something bigger would take longer, but could be done. So with all of this here, I'm going to go ahead and preview that off. I'm going to right click my patch and bake it. I'll bake it to layer one and we'll say, okay. Now you can see it here. I'm going to just go to shaded mode in uh, Rhino. The next step is to go ahead and use uh, uh, the other data sets we've made and we know that we're also going to have to move uh, that data. So I'm going to take my move and these components, uh, copy and paste, and move this down. And this time uh, I'm going to change my path and just use the curve edges. So here if we preview this on, I have a series of curve edges there. Um, one thing to note is that the data that we've, we've, we've moved our points here and created a patch surface, the patch surface is actually a little larger than um, the data that's contained. It's the way the patch is made. Uh, it extends to the left and right so that it can make an average curve on the surface. Uh, you can also see that our uh, curb edges are extending beyond our surface, and that's because if a road was contained within the selection that we had parsed initially, um, it will give you all of the information for that entire road out to the next intersection. Um, but with that, I do not want points, I want curves. And I'm going to interpolate a curve. And with interpolate, we have vertices to interpolate, and we have degrees. A three degree curve would be something fluid. I just want straight line segments, so I'm going to set my degree to one. To do that, I just right click degree, set integer one. So these are the curves to interpolate. You can see now we have a series of roads uh, moving through the site. So I can bake these, uh, and I'll put them on layer two for now, and I'm going to group them. And finally and lastly, we're going to do buildings. So I'm going to take this, copy and paste. Um, we'll, we're going to do the same thing. It's going to be a single line segment for the building, but in the paths, we'll set one path and we'll do buildings. And here we have the building uh, footprints. And if we look with the panel again, we have a series of field names. And this time, our building elevation is number three. So we want to extrude these footprints up to their correct elevation. Uh, to do that again, I need a list item. Uh, we're going to take our field value per shape. Uh, we're going to take our third uh, item in that list, which is our elevations here. And then we can say uh, in the Z, we're going to extrude 
we're extruding these curves at that vector. Let's see now they're 3D and I'm going to cap them. Uh, some of them didn't work out. You can see it's red, it's having an issue. Um, and all that means is that um, perhaps a portion of the data wasn't complete, but that's fine. This is a sufficient enough. So I'll take my buildings, I'll right click them, bake, and I'll put them on layer three as a group. And say, okay. Now I can go ahead and close Grasshopper. And in uh, Rhino, I have a, a pretty good topography and a series of buildings sitting on it, which is fantastic. I also have these uh, roads that are curves. With those just selected, I'm going to extrude them. It, it's a lot of curves, so I'm going to say I'm going to extrude them on both sides with a not being solid. So both sides, yes. And this is just to ensure they pass through the surface, the topo surface. And I don't want them solid. Um, so with that, I'll take my surface, I'll say split, uh, and I'll say that I want to split that surface with all of these uh, extrusions of the roads, and say OK. Um, this doesn't work always, but it seems to be pretty accurate for me. And what that should have done is, uh, let's see if I can say select last. Oh, I got it. We have everything. But I'm going to deselect kind of the plots of land here. So oh, I'm deselecting everything. And just the roads. So the roads, I'm going to move here onto this new layer, change object layer. You can see that um, you know there's a road that runs right there, but we didn't trim that off. There's a road that runs there, we didn't trim that off. There's a road that runs here, we didn't trim that off. Because we didn't keep that data, um, we're, we're really just mostly interested in this inside portion. Um, and then let's just make some quick changes. We'll change the color of this render setting to be dark. And for the buildings, we can change that to be slightly more gray, just so we can see the difference in the layer. Um, so that's it. That's a very, very quick way on how to use Meerkat to generate a site file. If I wanted to take this further, then I could take my ground, uh, I could contour it uh, from this point here and say move it up uh, vertically this way at two foot intervals, and I could get the contours of that piece of geometry. I could easily take this then to a laser cutter and make a contour model. Uh, so that's a way of using GIS data through Meerkat in Grasshopper to make site models in Rhino. Hope it helps.